Have you ever those neural networks and deep learning that everyone is talking about, but you were too afraid to ask? Well, by the end of this video, you'll be able to learn what artificial neural networks precisely are and how they work. First, though, let's see what a neuron is. A neuron in the neural networks field is something that takes some input, applies some logic, and outputs the result. We call it a function. For example, if we have f x equals y, x is the input and y is the output, and f is a function. To illustrate, so let's say I'm trying to understand the relationship between the length of the video we produce on our channel and the time that people actually spend watching the video. We collect data from some of our videos. I mean, we have the video duration, let's call it X, and the watching time, let's call it Y. And we imagine there is some relationship between them denoted by F. After that, I inform the machine about the relationship I expect to see between these two variables. I can choose a linear function between x and y or a nonlinear function. This function is what we call a neuron. Then we can predict the time people would spend watching a video lesson precisely based on our neuron and the video duration. Now, let's see what a neural network is. Well, in one sentence, a neural network is a network of neurons. It means that we have many neurons and all their inputs and outputs are intertwined and they feed each other. In this figure, you can see the difference between a neuron and a neural network. As you can see, a neuron is a basic unit of learning and a neural network is a bunch of interconnected neurons. Neural networks help us cluster and classify. They help to group data according to similarities among the example inputs, and they classify data when they have the output variable in the existing data set to learn from it. The questions you may ask at this point will probably be, question one, what kind of problems do neural networks solve? Neural networks could be applied for spam filtering, fraud detection, customer relationship management, angry customers or happy customers, image recognition, self-driving, etc. Question two, which functions will I use in each neuron? We can use linear or nonlinear, depending on the complexity of the problem. Question three, what is the architecture of the network? We have different types of neural networks, a perceptron, a recurrent neural network, or RNN, a convolutional neural network, CNN, etc. Now, how we can run our neural network. In the first place, the neural network learn to recognize patterns, just like a human. We show them examples of correct inputs and outputs in the hope that when we give it a new example input that it's never seen before, it will know how to give the correct output. That's what we call training on existing data sets. Don't forget, machine learning equals learning from examples. Let me present you the most basic neural network the perceptron, and discuss how it processes inputs and produces an output. So suppose we use our neural network for fruit image recognition. I have two inputs for that purpose, the color and the shape of some fruits in our data sets, and a single binary output, which is the fruit name. Once the machine has learned all these properties, I can give it a new image of a fruit one it hasn't seen before, and it will hopefully classify it correctly and be able to tell me whether it is an orange or a banana. The perceptron learns from the existing data and knows which information will be most important in decision making. To decide between multiple information, it uses something called weights. The weights are just numerical representations of these preferences. A higher weight means our perceptron considers that input more important compared to other inputs. So for our example, let's deliberately set suitable weights for our two inputs, two for the fruit shape and four for the fruit color. Now, how does the perceptron calculate the output? It simply multiplies the input with its respective weight and sums up all the values it gets from all the inputs. Let's consider that we have two shapes, round and long. 
If the shape is round, the input 1 value is 1, and if it's not round, the value is 0. We'll repeat the same thing with the color. Red takes the value of 1, and the yellow color the value of 0. Based on this information, if the fruit is round and red, our perceptron would do the following calculation. Total equals round times shape weight plus red times color weight. So total equals 1 times 2 plus 1 times 4 equals 6. This calculation is known as a linear combination. Now let's see what this value 6 means. We first need to define the threshold value. Because the perceptron's output is either 0 or 1, 0 for a banana, and 1 for an orange, this output is determined like this. If the value of the linear combination is higher than the threshold value, then the output is 1, and if it is not, the output is 0. So let's say the threshold value is 3, which means that if the calculation gives you a number less than 3, we have a banana. But if it's equal to or more than 3, then we have an orange. That's how perceptron works. It uses a linear combination and produces the output. In reality, we set the weights to random values, and then the network adjusts those weights based on the output errors it made using the previous weights. That is called training the neural network. In the mathematical language, the perceptron algorithms work like this. The output is equal to zero if the sum of the weight times the value of the variable is smaller than a threshold. In the same way, the output will be equal to one if the sum of the weight times the value of the variables is bigger than a threshold. To make things just a little simpler for training, the threshold is sometimes moved to the other side of the inequality and replaced with what's known as the neuron's bias. Now, with bias, we only need to make changes to the left side of the equation, while the right side can remain constant at zero. The left side of the equation is a function. It is a function that transforms the values or states the conditions for the decision of the output neuron. It is known as an activation function. The formula above is just one of several activation functions, and, and the simplest one, used in deep learning, and it is called the heavy side step function. In reality, we can also use other activation functions. For example, we can use the sigmoid function, the tan function, and the softmax functions. Each of them has a purpose, and we'll present each of these functions in a special video dedicated just to that. That's it for our first introductory video on neural network. Now, you have a solid understanding of the basics of neural networks and how perception works. In our next video in neural networks, we will explain how the multi-layers perceptron works and we will present the concept of hidden layers. So if you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it, subscribe to our channel, and make sure you click on the notification button so you can receive a notification when our next course is ready.